So I've been using the 2021 Apple TV 4K for a little over a week now, and I gotta say, it's amazing. Here's my review. Now, let's talk about the brand new Siri remote. Going away of the touchpad, the menu, and on with the mute button, the power button, and the Siri button being located to the side just like your iPhone. Yes, Apple gave us a directional button, but if you wanna still use the swipe gestures, you could still do so using the directional pad. And I think that's very clever of Apple to do because you still have that functionality in case you still love it. Because I must say, that seeking through your media, like let's say you wanna fast forward something, you could drag your finger across the directional pad and it's just you get to point A to point B within seconds without tapping, 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 tapping. Sometimes it can get in the way, maybe I just gotta get used to it, but if you're not a fan of the gestures at all, you can turn it off in the settings app, so you can have it to only click only. And I must say this remote design is bringing back the old Apple TV times where you have the aluminum finish with the black buttons. So this is more of a throwback, a retro style in a sense. I appreciate the curvature on the back, so better ergonomics. Now I also appreciate the back button being concave. You can just feel your remote and know exactly what you're pressing. And each button that you press, you have that very satisfying click so when you press play, you just hear that click, click. It's very satisfying. Now, unfortunately, the sonometer or gyroscope isn't present here. So if you wanna play your favorite Apple TV games, you cannot utilize this Siri remote to play those games, but you can connect a DualSense controller or an Xbox controller, and that's far more better anyway compared to just using the remote. Now for charging, it utilizes the lightning port on the bottom. No type C is present here, unfortunately. Now when Apple was showcasing the Apple TV where you can fast forward or rewind by scrolling your thumb, I found that very cool and unique and it's just like a nice throwback to the iPod days, but it depends on what app that you're on. So developers need some time to implement that. I hope it comes sooner than later. And you can buy this remote separately for $60. So if you have an existing Apple TV fourth generation, you could be able to just buy the Siri remote for $60 and you could just pair it up there and that's it. And I'm gonna be honest, if you have the last generation Apple TV, maybe you just need this remote and you're done because I believe the A10 chip is more than enough. And with the new Apple TV featuring the A12 chip, you're not gonna see any kind of lag or performance hiccups. You can even watch two NBA games or multiple NBA games on one screen. This is nuts. You can have picture in picture and you can be able to do something else and no signs of slowdown whatsoever. That's exactly what you're paying for. This is the best performance stream set box on the market. Now, setup was extremely easy. Plug in your Apple TV, and then you hover over your iPhone, and it's gonna automatically come up similar to AirPods, and you tap on connect. And what it's gonna do is, the Apple TV and the iPhone is gonna talk to each other, communicate, get the Wi-Fi information, get my iCloud, my Apple ID. You can connect your HomePods, use them as TV speakers. If your TV supports ARC, you could be able to set it up through your Apple TV, and then the HomePod would be looked at as a uh, entertainment center. You can utilize both speakers, so I have a sound bar, and I have the two HomePods. You can use both, but there's a big delay between the two, but I would say it's like a one second delay, but it's enough where I'm not gonna use it too much. Everything is snappy and responsive, nice fluid animation when you open it and close in apps. Even when you open up the app switcher, some apps memorize in the background. So I could be watching YouTube and then switch over to Netflix and pick up exactly where I left off. Now I went with the 32 gigabyte variant, but for an extra $20, you can opt for the 64 gigabytes. No matter which storage configuration you go with, you're not gonna run into any kind of storage issues, even with the 32 gigabytes. If you wanna use this as a gaming console, you might wanna go with the 64 gigabytes, it's recommended. But when it comes down to media consumption, you're just streaming the content. Even when you're renting TV shows or movies, you're still streaming the content from the Apple servers. It's not downloading it to your Apple TV to watch it offline. Now you guys are probably wondering, what's the point of an Apple TV when we have smart devices, fire sticks? What is the point of the Apple TV? Who is it for? And is it even worth the price, the $180 price tag? When it comes down to app selection, nothing is touching the App Store. You can get Peacock, the Nosy app, just to name a few, right here on the Apple TV versus my smart TV. He doesn't even have neither one of those apps. If you're part of the Apple ecosystem, you have a MacBook, 
iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, you're gonna love the Apple TV. So for example, if I'm typing something on my Apple TV, I'm automatically gonna receive a notification on my iPad or iPhone, whatever device I use last, I'm gonna get a notification right then and there. To continue to type in on my iPhone or iPad and just tap on done and it automatically pull up to the Apple TV. So that is very convenient instead of you going one character at the time. And yes, you can even use dictation, use the Siri remote to search up your apps, which by the way, it works flawlessly. Now Siri is a little limited, cannot send messages or you can't ask Siri to read your messages, um, but you can check for the stocks, the weather, turn on and off your smart devices. But when it comes down to searching up movies, TV shows or apps, Siri can open it up within seconds. Let's say you're watching a movie and you didn't quite understand what that person was saying. You can ask Siri to say, what did he say? And it's gonna actually uh, rewind and turn on the captions. So that is, or the subtitles, I should say. Subtitles, captions, subtitles, captions. What do you guys normally, what's the difference between subtitles and captions? Captions are designed for viewers who cannot hear, and subtitles is for people who can hear, but don't understand the language in the video. Wow. There's a new feature called color calibration, where you take your face ID enabled iPhone, and you can calibrate the colors, giving you the best colors for your Apple TV. And the cool thing about it is once you go to it, on your settings on your Apple TV, the iPhone is gonna automatically seize it and it's gonna pop it up from the bottom like we discussed it earlier, just like AirPods. It does make a big difference because the cooler colors on the regular one versus the balanced colors is a little bit more warmer tone. But keep in mind, this is only from the signal to the Apple TV. You're not calibrating your TV colors. So if you play on your PS5, you're not gonna have that same balancedness, that same color calibration that you set on your Apple TV on your PS5. This is only applying to the Apple TV. You can even connect AirPods. So let's say the middle of the night, you're watching a movie, you don't wanna disturb your partner, you can connect your AirPods, send the audio signals to the AirPods without disturbing your partner. That is genius. You don't have no lag, no delay. Let's say both of you guys wanna watch a movie. You can have two AirPods connected simultaneously to the Apple TV watching a movie. And that goes across the board. So you can listen to music, podcasts, whatever app you're on, you can be able to connect your AirPods to your Apple TV. And then they even have an option where you can limit the noise where it's not too much noise at night. So I look at that as a night mode. So it's not gonna be as much dynamic sound. And then you have Apple Fitness. Apple Fitness is Apple subscription service where you can get some workouts in, you can do yoga just to relax, and it's gonna see the data from your Apple Watch, send it over to the Apple TV so it can know how many calories you're burning. You can even see your rings on the TV. Listen to Apple Music. So if you're a fan of Apple Fitness, the Apple TV is a no-brainer. You're gonna need that. And of course, you have your screen mirroring. So if you on your iPad, you wanna do a PowerPoint presentation, and then within seconds, it's gonna come up on your Apple TV showcase your photos or your PowerPoint or word processing onto the big screen. Now, if you shoot Dolby Vision videos on your iPhone 12, you could be able to showcase it. You have the high speed HDMI speed, so HDMI 2.1. So you have support up to 120 Hertz, which is fantastic. So anything that you put up on the screen, everything is gonna look buttery smooth. Now, unfortunately, my TV doesn't support HDMI 2.1, so I cannot utilize the high speed HDMI connection to the TV, to the Apple TV. Now I wanna throw this out there, the screensavers, mm, it's A1. And this is very important for me because when I'm making my videos, I can just have this chilling out in the background. Important, but for real, this is really where my Apple TV is at. And yeah. You guys can't even see because it's focusing on me. Apple could still add in new features in the future. Now, in conclusion, I'll say the Apple TV 4K, I'll admit it is a little overpriced. At $180 for 32 gigabytes, that is just overkill for a streaming set box. But if you're looking for the best performance, you're in the Apple ecosystem, this is a no brainer. And then as for the Apple TV HD, which I don't recommend, you better off just going with the 4K. So when you do upgrade to a 4K TV, you already set and loaded already. Keep in mind, the Apple TV 4K can still output HD. You're not just limited to 4K.